What's up, you guys? I love reading all of your comments and questions. And after the not so newlywed game I did with Israel, a lot of you had questions about my fear of flying and how I handle that. So I got to thinking about like my fears in general and how so many of us have them and how do we handle them? So I figured we'd talk about that today. So I know I've talked a lot about my fear of flying. I've talked about it on The Real, I've talked about it here. But uh, if you didn't see any of those videos, here's a little recap. I'm afraid of flying. It's not my favorite thing, but I do it so often. I actually started becoming afraid of flying after 9-11. I was actually on tour with 3LW during that time. We were on the TRL tour, which was being headlined by Destiny's Child. And when that tragedy happened, being from New York, obviously I was so affected by it. I told my mom that I would never get on a plane ever again. And my mom told me, Adrian, fear is a very powerful thing. And that if you allow fear to consume you, it will snowball. And it'll go from I'm afraid to flying to I'm afraid to driving to I'm afraid to leaving my house. So I have come to terms with the fact that I will not allow that to stop me from living, to stop me from traveling, because I do love visiting so many amazing places. I just don't love how I get there. So how I handle that is a few different things. Number one, I have recognized that I am not a big drinker. Uh, a lot of you guys see me on Friday and you're always like, she must be pregnant because she's not drinking her drink. No, I am the queen of babysitting a cocktail. So I have recognized that if I have a glass or two of wine, it usually puts me straight to sleep. So I do not recommend anybody medicating themselves with alcohol, that is not the answer. But for me, I, I would prefer that over a pharmaceutical drug. I do two glasses of wine, I end up falling asleep. I also only listen to worship music while I am flying. For me, I put a playlist together, that's my airplane playlist. It's just calming, it soothes me to know that God is with me. I also pray with my mother before every single flight. We also say this one thing in my prayer that I love and it's like at the end of our prayer, we're like, angels, take your post. And that for me just um, is really comforting knowing that God has given us the authority to command our angels to look after us and take care of us. And that my life is in God's hands definitely helps me realize that. Um, I also like to read inspirational books on the airplane. You're gonna think I'm insane, but I can't do anything scary. I don't watch TV on airplanes. I have to keep my mind in a very positive place. And I know this sounds really weird, but one of the things that uh, is really helpful for me is manifestation on the plane. So I believe in manifesting things that if you, this is, this is so creepy and weird. I know you guys might think I'm weird, but that's what this is about, is me just being honest and completely transparent with you. Even if it sounds weird, this is what I do and maybe it can be helpful to you. But I always think about where I'm going and where I'm landing. So like, let's say I'm in New York and I'm taking off from JFK. I will know what my route is for when I land and I go to my car at LAX in LA. And that for me is super helpful to like manifest it and know you're gonna land, this is what you're gonna do. You're gonna go get your car. What are you gonna, am I gonna grab in and out on the way home? Am I gonna go to Carl's Jr.? Cause they have a veggie burger. And we manifest the things that are coming up for me, whether it be new names for my babies, uh, a future trip that we're planning. I know that's really weird but like knowing and manifesting that I'm gonna be around for those things uh, helps me get through my fear that like, you know, that I'm gonna die on this plane. Some of you were asking if I have FOMO. I never, ever, ever suffer from FOMO. I actually suffer from the opposite, which is called JOMO, and it's the joy of missing out. We have these amazing things called phones and social media where people can't help but show you everything that happened at the party. So why did I even have to go? I can literally enjoy the entire event from the comfort of my couch. So I never ever experience FOMO, I experience JOMO. I do not have any fear of aging in Hollywood at all. Um, I'm actually really excited to get into my 40s. Some of my girlfriends just recently became 40, like Jeannie Mai and Tamara, and their experience has been so amazing and they also say that, you know, your sex life, that's a woman's sexual peak. So I'm like, wait, what is about to happen? I'm excited about that. I also watched shows like Sex and the City where the women were already slightly older and I thought they were so badass and beautiful. And um, I actually truly do believe that a woman becomes sexier with age. And when she's like 
comfortable in her skin and I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. I think also something that's really sexy is being a mom. So I, I'm looking into the future and just excited. I don't know, I think I had a kid career for so long in the industry that oddly enough, I probably have the opposite issue of people. Like I'm like, I don't wanna be a kid anymore. Like I was a kid for a really long time. I played the role of a kid for a really long time. I was like 19 years old playing a 14 year old in Cheetah Girl. So um, I love being a grown woman. I never want to lose myself in the sense of getting older and just like letting myself go, like not wanting to be like cute or fashionable. And I just don't ever see that happening because I really enjoy it. I don't know why, I just don't care about those things anymore. My biggest fear is missing out on real life. Not even what I'm doing here now. I love you all very much, but like my real life is not in front of the camera. I always see these quotes that say, Instagram is the highlights of people's lives. Like Instagram shows the good stuff of their life. And I always so disagree with that for my own personal life. I feel like what you get on Instagram is 5% of who I am, maybe less, of like what my life is. And I genuinely think that the most beautiful moments of my life, the most beautiful experiences that I've ever experienced are never captured or placed on Instagram. And I think that's the kind of life everyone should aim to have, is a life that's better than your Instagram feed. The love that I share with my husband is better than any photo I can upload or any video I can put on IG story. I can tell you for days and days, like my soulmate, my caption and all the like, it does not compare to our everyday life to waking up with somebody, having someone to hold, the laughter, we, like, I, I, can, I can't explain that to you. So when I think about fears of how the world views me, it just seems so dumb and so, so surface. And I'm a lot more than pictures on Instagram. I'm more than my YouTube channel. I have a real life and those are the things I really care about. Not gonna front. I did not have fear about starting this channel, mainly because I didn't know very much about the YouTube platform, not gonna lie. Like, I didn't know really what I was getting myself into. So sometimes, I'm not gonna lie, ignorance is bliss. Because if you don't really know what's gonna happen, then like when I got my plaque for having 100,000 followers, I was like crying. I was like, what the heck are all these feelings that I'm feeling? Mark. I wasn't afraid to start a YouTube channel because I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know how personal it was gonna be and, and I've loved the experience. I kind of enjoy going into things blindfolded. I have no fear about like becoming a mom, like at all. I feel complete peace about it. I think it's something that I've so looked forward to, but I, I didn't really think so much about being a mom when I was a lot younger. So just now it's more of something I'm excited for. I think um, I've had a career for a really long time. I've been in this industry for over 20 years. I accomplished way more than I ever thought I would have. If I just become a great mom at this point, that's the goal. Like, I don't, I don't fear about like, oh, my career is gonna fail if I become a, like, I don't care about that. Like, I'd rather be a mom. That, to me, is what success is about. It's not like, oh, how much money do you make? Or, you know, did you become super famous? Like, I, genu like, I genuinely, with all my heart, do not care about that stuff. I cannot wait to be a mom. I cannot wait to be at home with my family. And that will be my focus. And my career definitely, if things work out, still with that, awesome. If they don't, that's cool too. I just asked Kelly, my producer, I'm like, wait, did that sound super snarky? Like, I don't, I don't want it to come across like I don't care or that I'm ungrateful. But I think it's so important to have perspective in life of the things that really matter. And I think as women, we're so hard on ourselves about like, you have to have it all. You have to be like a superhero career woman and a superhero mom. Like for me personally, like I always joke around, like if you never see me again, you know, I'll be somewhere really happy with my baby and my husband. I do have some fears about my health issues. The people that know me know I don't mess with drugs at all. And I can't do any stimulants in my particular body. I have a very sensitive body. So a lot of you guys know that I love, love, love coffee, but I can't have caffeine. So I try to do decaf and those sorts of things because if I have stimulants, um, I'm very sensitive to them. So my heart will start palpitating really fast. I'll think I'm having a heart attack. My hands will start sweating profusely. Like it's just a hot mess. 
So those kind of feelings definitely do freak me out. If some of you guys don't know, I was diagnosed with Hashimoto's when I was 15 years old and that is an autoimmune disease that has given me hypothyroidism, which means that my thyroid gland does not work. So I take a daily supplement of the hormone that it's supposed to secrete. The hormone that uh, your thyroid gland secretes is what controls your heart rate, your metabolism, your energy levels, and your mood. So when it's not working, I'm extremely exhausted. Um, a lot of doctors ask me sometimes, like they're like, do you feel sluggish? I'm like, I don't know anymore. I've had this for over 20 years. Like, I'm not sure what it feels like to like be energetic. Like I just fight, I power through it. So there's that. And then just this year I was diagnosed with Graves disease, which is a very rare case because you either have Hashimoto's or you have Graves disease. They're both autoimmune diseases. I am a rare case where I carry both. A lot of you guys have asked me why I decided to start a vegan diet. So I'm trying to do everything I can on the holistic side to take good care of my temple. And uh, one of those ideas was celery juice in the morning, which I do every single morning on an empty stomach and to help my autoimmune disease and also following a vegan diet. So that's been super helpful to me. And my husband is constantly telling me to stay off WebMD, but I swear that I have my license and like I'm a web doctor, like literally. I'm not afraid of in insects in general or animals, any animals. Like bugs don't bother me. Like I'm just like, oh, there's a bug, walk away from it. I don't enjoy when bees are directly coming in my direction. Snakes don't really bother me either. I don't wanna to touch them. I don't wanna mess around with them. I don't want them in my life. But like, if one was over there, it would not like completely freak me out where you can't bring me in the room with the snake. I am not a fan of rats. I grew up with rats in New York City. So I probably have a bigger fear of rats than snakes that shows the city girl in me. In New York City, I at night, I don't ever walk on the sidewalk especially if there's trash on the sidewalk, I walk in the street. It's not the safest thing, but I feel like it's safer for me and my heart and then a rat running out and causing me to have a heart attack. I am not afraid of earthquakes. We experienced one, actually. There was one in Westwood last year and my entire bed shook and I woke up and I was looking for my husband. I was calling him on the phone, calling him, calling, calling, and he didn't answer, but I'm not afraid of them. Again, ignorance is bliss. I haven't experienced a really terrible one, so I don't, I don't know what to expect. I am not afraid of big waves and I am not afraid of the ocean and I love to swim. So nobody in the comments tell me bad things about drowning. Come on, I got enough fears, don't give me new ones, thanks. I do have a slight fear of heights, but it's not, it's more of being like suspended in thin, like I, again, it's the airplane heights thing. Like I don't mind buildings or views, like no, I hike. I love getting to the top and looking at it. It's the idea of not having anything under me that freaks me out. I don't have a fear of small spaces, but I have experienced claustrophobia where like, if I think I'm stuck in an elevator, like I think like I'm getting less oxygen and that freaks me out. I have skydived. It actually was something that I was told to do to get over my fear of flying and that was bull it was a lie. It was a complete and total lie. It was the worst experience of my entire life. I will never do it again. I don't recommend anyone do it. It literally feels like, like I took the leap of committing suicide without committing, like it was terrible. It was God awful, the worst experience of my entire life. I would never, ever, ever do that again. Like that feeling of free fall that people say, oh, my adrenaline, like hell no. Like I, I will go on a jog for an adrenaline rush. Like I'm not jumping out of planes. That's just ridiculous. It was, it was terrible. So those are my fears and kind of how I handle them. I feel like if you're fearing flying, let's get through this together. Give me tips. I hope that some of my tips helped you out. And you guys, I love you. Let's not be fearful. Mwah. I'll see you next week. Don't forget to subscribe.